Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Warframe Basics. Today, we're going to do we're doing a very quick tutorial about understanding the star map. So, people get kind of confused about how the star map works. I mean, most of it's pretty straightforward. Go from one thing to the next. Little flashing blue ones are ones that you haven't completed yet, or solid white ones are ones that you have. Now, we'll start here in Earth because this is where most people start. The, this is where all people actually start the game. Um, so when you when you mouse over a node, you will see mission, faction, level, how many open squads if you're doing public games, and then how when it expires if it's a specific type of special mission. Like right now, there's a tier one fisher. So right up here. This is where you can find tier one fishers. Now, all of these up here are kind of some quick accesses for players who played the game a fairly decent period of time. You'll have things like basic alerts. This is arbitration, which is for people who've completed the entire game. Uh, well, they've finished the entire star map, at least. Um, you have the weekly alerts, like Maru Maru's Bazaar, which is weekly attained sculptures, which we'll get to in a different video. And Helping Clam, which nets you some interesting rewards. Nothing really that great, but, you know, whatever. You can help Clem. That's important. Now, the regular alerts will give you one of three different kinds of things. It will give you cosmetic items like the... Well, four things, actually. They'll give you cosmetic items like Storm, Helmet. They'll give you component items like Void Traces or Niatane. They'll give you credits, or they'll give you blueprint. Now, blueprints are, di blueprints are not... Cosmetics, they are things like uh, Jaw Sword or Dark Sword or, you know, Heat Sword. These are weapons that you pick up through the game. These pick weapons you can't pick up anywhere else in the game, but you pick up through alert missions instead. Now, um, kind of like, I mean, the Void Fishers are kind of like, kind of like alert missions. They pop up on random planets and happen for a time. So... I've already went over these in my relic, my void relic uh, vid tutorial video, so those are pretty self-explanatory at that point. But like for here on E Prime, there's a sabotage alert for the Volt. Now, one of the things about alerts is they can kind of change what's going on. Like this is normally an Earth node, and it usually has the, the faction is usually Grenier, but because it's an alert mission, you get the faction of Infestation instead, and it can also change the level of the enemies. And, you know, obviously it'll show you the rewards and there'll be a lot more open squads because people want to get alerts. Now, you can when you click on one, however, you're not just going to get the alert mission. You're also going to get the regular mission as well, which will you can click on and go to that one instead. So don't be afraid of clicking on things that have weird symbols on them or colors because they're, they're something that's additional. It's something that you have to go do. Now... The relays, which some people have seen, they are basically the Tenno meeting hubs where you can go and kind of play around. Nothing more beyond that. There are a couple symbols on the map that some people get a little bit confused by, and that's these kind of these weird symbols like this, which is all of a sudden it's a it's a higher level with a lot of bonuses. These are what used to be called dark sectors. Now dark sectors are there's there's one or two on there's like one on each planet usually. This one has two to call Ancoba. So, they're good places to go leveling. They're usually all... I think they're all endless missions. So, they're a great place to go farm resources. They're a great place to go get um, levels for your new Warframe or for a weapon that you're playing with. Um, as you notice, both are the same level, so it's really kind of weird that they're in different places. But, hey. You'll also see missions like this, which are Arcwing missions. And you'll see missions, of course, in space. But the really big different ones will be... Well... When you complete a planet, you'll get these ones, Nightmare Modes. Nightmare are higher level, and they'll have some type of weird challenge to them, like in this case, Vampire Mode for this one. Some of them have other ones. Oh, cat, don't you dare. Now, the only other symbol you'll see event in the start is the Junction. Junctions, they have certain requirements for you to complete. Once you do, you go to them, and they let you go to different planets after you've completed them. Pretty simple, standard, easy, basic. Now, when you go to a new planet, you click on the to a place, or you can zoom out and just kind of click on a planet. And as I mentioned in my previous video about how to get components, you can just kind of look over here if you want to find something specific and see, oh, this planet I'm going to has alloy plate, polymer bundle, circuits, and field drawn sample. That's cool. And then you'll also notice there's a new symbol on this planet. On Fusa, and actually every planet has this symbol in some way, 
is an assassination target. Now, assassinations are basically the bosses. And as I mentioned in my Warframe, how to acquire Warframe video, bosses are where you pick up all your different Warframes, from Ember to Frost to Excalibur even. They all have a boss where they drop a basic Warframe. See over here, here's, the, here's Malva, Malva, which is an survival, endless Dark Sector missions. So beyond that, the star map becomes very, very simple. Once you understand some of the basic symbology, it becomes pretty easy to understand. Again, you can always zoom out. Change loadout is not in super important. It's for... That's for something with the arsenal, which we'll get to another time. It allows you to quick switch between different preset designs of Warframe and weaponry. Now, there's only a couple places on the, do on the, on the star map that might be a little confusing to some people. One of them is the Derelict. The derelict are all locked, and people are like, "Why is the derelict locked?" Because you need to get by. You actually need to purchase and build keys for them, and they're very high-level missions. Now, there's one for each type of basic type of mission right now: exterminate, mobile defense, defense, capture, sabotage, and survival. And then, of course, assassinate. These were the first. These were the original mission types. So that's what how they've always been since then. So don't expect them to change really much, unless at one point D decides they want to add like. And for some reason, excavation on a derelict starship. I don't know why they would do that. It's also one of the few places where you can get mutagen samples, by the way. Keep that in mind. Dojo, down here. Dojo, you will pop up if you are part of, well, a clan. Clan dojos, you click on the thing that you're part of. And it shows you your clan. And it shows you how to, it shows you to enter. It shows you if you have anything in particular that the clan needs to have. And so on. Now, I have seven other little members in here. And some of them are probably going to get kicked because they have been gone for so long. I usually give them until 30 days. I've had to the most number of people I've had in my clan for, since I, I created it probably about four years ago. Now, beyond that, the Void has a couple different accesses to it. It's all fairly basic stuff. There's, there's another Nightmare Mode. And that's, that's pretty much all of the basics of the star map right away. And I'll touch on one other thing before, well, two other things before we go. The first is invasion. Invasions are for people who've kind of cleared most of the map and are looking to get resources like the detonite injectors, the field draw, and the mutagen samples without having to actually build them. You heard me right. You don't have to build these. You, these are gifts given to you once a particular part of this mission is finished. So, if you go into Europa Grenier Offensive here, look at that, that pops up. Otherwise, if you're looking for it, it's this fist right here. So, you'll want to look for a fist map. Oh, boy. There's more things there than one. So, this has a Grenier Offensive, the arbitration, and a regular mission. So, the... That's the arbitration. That's a whole different... Uh, no, well, the arbitration just has a symbol. So, the... The invasion is a Grenier interception or a Corpus exterminate. The faction is, of course, is Grenier, levels 28 to 31, 33, open squads, and status and completions in battle pay. So status is telling you how much more, how many more times it can be cleared before the whole event's over, the whole invasion's done. The completions is how many times you have completed, and you can complete it more than three times, but you only need to complete it three times in order to get your battle pay. And you get your battle pay after the whole thing is over. So it's not like, oh, I got my three completions. Okay, you get three detonite injectors or three fieldron. It's when the whole invasion's over. So buckle up, kids. It's going to be a while. Some planets have multiple invasions going on, like Setna. This has more than one. And these are kind of covered up and sometimes by other things like Kuva Siphons. But then you got this one here, which is a Corpus Capture Grenier Spy Mission or a Corpus Sabotage or Grenier. So all these ones are the same. But you get, you can see what all the different rewards are by looking over here. Most often, Grenier are going to give you detonite injectors. Corpus are going to give you field drawn. And when you're fighting against the infested, sometimes you'll get mutagen sample. Well, this one also gives you a mutilus allied V coordinates, which are for fighting him as a raid kind of ish boss. Now, oh, there he goes. Okay, so Miltha gives you a mutagen mass for completing it. Kind of rare. Usually they give you three. So all of these are missions are useful for getting those really big resources that are needed for some of the bigger weapons in the clan and for some weapons that pop up in the marketplace. Now, something to keep in mind, you can never side with the infested, ever. And though some people thought that would be super fun, but you can't. 
You'll only can side with the faction who's currently in the area, whether it be Corpus or Grenier. That's why there's only two construction statuses. Now, these two things are basically micro-events that happen every time they reach full. Either a Fomorian shows up and tries to destroy one of our relays, or a Razorback Armada does. And they always will grant um, usually a catalyst or a reactor. So they're kind of something that people try to aim for sometimes. The second and last thing I'm going to talk about is syndicate missions. Now, I'll talk about syndicates in a different video, but these missions here are kind of broken up. And if you go to... Ooh, not what I wanted to do. <laughs> if you see these here, and it's like, okay, this... Oh, this was on Brahinia Sedna. So if I close that down, I can see that on Brahinia, there's a symbol of a sword and a flag. So unlike everything else, it has a kind of a universal symbol, like the exclamation point for Kelpie, which are alert missions. Uh, and, you know, these are vampiric. Well, these are, uh, sorry. These are nightmare modes. The syndicate missions always show what their syndicate's flag. So in this case, it's the Arbiters of Hexus. And you also have, for me, I have Cephalon Suda, and I also have Steel Meridian, because those are my three factions that I'm, al I'm allied with. And then, of course, you also have Samaris, who's everybody's friend. Now, doing these missions grants you, you know, standing reward, which is really good, but absolutely nothing else. The only benefits they give you is that additional standing for your faction. So, everybody, that has been kind of the basics of the star map in a quick nutshell. And I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, like, comment, or subscribe. If you haven't, please let me know in the comments. I always like to know what I can do better or what, you know, I need to try harder on. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for watching.